This is MJ and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this cozy striped cardigan. It features pockets that are tucked inside the cardigan. It's nice and long. It has this nice ridged collar along the sides. Take a look at the top. It's nice and long and, and fits very nice and cozy. So the yarn that I've used to make this cardigan is Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Superwash Yarn. It's a really nice 100% wool yarn. It's worsted weight. I have 110 yards per a 50 gram ball. If you go to my blog post, I'm going to have all the details on yardage and stuff needed. But for my small size cardigan that I made here, I've used two balls of my orange two balls of the yellow. I've used four balls in total of my dark charcoal gray and I've used six balls of white. And you'll need two hooks for this project. The majority of our cardigan is worked in a 5.5 millimeter hook but we'll also use a 5 millimeter hook for our cuff and also the collar that goes around the sweater. Okay, so it's really important to start off with a gauge swatch just to make sure that you are on track, just in case you're using a different yarn than what I'm working with. So with my 5.5 millimeter hook and my worsted weight yarn, you want to do a gauge swatch and you could do about maybe 20 stitches by 10 rows just to kind of give you an idea to get started. So I have a total of uh, 13, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 stitches and that's 6, 7, 8, 9, approximately 9 rows. So our cardigan begins with our back panel and we work up the panel and then we separate at the neck and continue continuously to make our left and right front panels. And I work through all those steps with you throughout the video. Now to get you started, I've used all of my white yarn so I'm just gonna show you with the yellow but the color pattern will go from your white orange white gray white yellow and continue in that pattern <clears throat> you may want to follow along with your pattern as you go through this as it is more difficult creating a sweater than a simpler design so beginning with your white, not with your yellow, I'm just going to demonstrate this with our yellow yarn. Because the stitch pattern is very simple throughout this cardigan. So for our small size cardigan, for our back panel, we're chaining 59. For this demonstration, I'm just going to chain 11. And then we'll work one single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So there's one, two. And work single crochet stitches all the way across your chain. So 
So you should have 58 stitches when you've worked across your chain. I have 10 and now I'll chain one and turn. We'll work one more row of single crochet. So our chain one doesn't count as a stitch for this section. We're just single crocheting across. And our two rows of single crochet are counting as one of our rows of herringbone double crochet, which we get into now. So now we'll chain two and turn. And now throughout the pattern, your chain two is included as a stitch. So when I include the chain two as a stitch, that means I'm skipping the first stitch because we're including that and I work right into the next. So now we're beginning our herringbone double crochet pattern. So you yarn over, go through the stitch, pulling a loop, pulling it right through the first loop on the hook. Yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, go through the stitch, pulling up a loop, pull through that first loop on the hook, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, go through the stitch, grabbing your loop, pulling it through the first loop on the hook, yarn over, pull through one, pull through two, and this is creating our stitch to be pulled on the diagonal. And it gives us this really nice stitch pattern that you can see here that almost looks like arrows going throughout your work. So complete your herringbone double crochets all along your row. So I've just crocheted into my last stitch. So you should have 58 stitches in total and that includes your chain two. Now we'll turn and chain two, skipping the first stitch, working into the next. And repeat this all the way along, working your herringbone double crochet. When you get to the end of your row, because our chain two counts as a stitch, we work our final herringbone double crochet in the turning chain. Chain two and turn. So now in total for our first section of white, you're gonna work five rows of herringbone double crochet and then you have your two rows of single crochet to make a total section of six herringbone doubles. And now throughout our pattern, we do six rows of herringbone double crochets throughout. So again, follow along with your pattern. There's no change here in stitch count. We're just working across our 58 stitches. So complete your five rows of herringbone doubles change up to the orange, work six rows, change to the white, work six rows, change to the dark gray, work six rows, change to the white, work six rows, and so on. And you're just working that all the way up until we get back to yellow. And then we'll only work three and I'll meet you up again to split the panels, but that's basically what we do throughout. So I'm just gonna show you when I get to the end of this row, how we change color. Okay, so at the end of our row, we're working our last stitch in the turning chain. So pull through, yarn over, pull through one. And when we change color, we change on that final yarn over through the last two loops on the hook. So we've chained changed and then what you will do is you'll cut your yarn and crochet over that those ends as you go so chain two turn and then crochet over your ends now make sure you leave some of the end available to weave back in the opposite direction you really want to make sure you secure those ends by weaving back or those pull through as your sweater pulls so make sure that you do that extra step. 
and just going in the one direction does save a little bit of weaving but you can leave them to the outside if you prefer that to do it all at once it's up to you so that's how you change your color so now again just work through your color pattern follow along with the blog or the pdf download and i'll meet you back up when we split the neck for our front panels okay so i finished up my back panel and as you can see i've crocheted over my ends as i've gone so now what you want to do is just take these ends and weave them back in the opposite direction and that is just going to secure them crocheting over them this way just helps to save on a little bit of that weaving but you just want to take your yarn needle and weave it back and then trim so now i'm going to mark my neck opening so i've worked my stripe pattern working only three rows of the yellow so now our neck opening is approximately six inches or 18 stitches so for the size that I'm working on, I need to count in 20 stitches on each side. So one. And in the 21st stitch, I'm just going to add my marker. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 18 and I'll put my next marker and I should have 20 stitches remaining. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 20 stitches. So follow along with your pattern. All sizes are going to have the same neck opening but you will have more on either side depending on the size you're working on. Okay, so I've chained two and turn, and now we're going to begin increasing. So we'll add in that very first stitch our herringbone double crochet. And in the next stitch, so including our chain two, we're going to be increasing to 21 stitches for this row. And our final stitch in the turning chain and chain two and we'll turn now we'll skip that stitch our chain two counts as our first herringbone double crochet and I'm gonna work across and I'll meet you at the end so now for this row, we're not increasing. We're just gonna increase every other row. So we're gonna just go into that turning chain and we need to change our color because this is our sixth row of yellow. So pull through one and then we'll cut the yellow yarn, bringing in the cream. We'll chain two and all of the increases will be on the inside of our work here. So when we're on the inner side of the panel, then we're going to do the increase. So we go right down into the first stitch. And again, I'm going to crochet over my ends as I work, pull through. So this row will go up to 22 stitches and we're going to keep increasing 
until we have 29, which is half of our 58. So I'll work across and meet you up again. So when we get to the end, we're just working into that turning chain. Chain two and turn. And we're skipping the first stitch. and working across our herringbone. And this row that we will not do an increase. So we just finish off with one herringbone double crochet in the turning chain. So I'll complete working across. I'll meet you on the other side. And I've reached the end. <clears throat> I'm gonna work a herringbone into that turning chain chain two and turn. And you can count your stitches just to make sure that you are working the correct stitch count. And we're just going along with our pattern. So now, as you can see, when we fold this, we'll start matching up. So when we work down our front panel, we're finishing with the cream gray, cream, orange, and so on. So we just want to follow the pattern so that this is going to line up for a nice, when we seam our sides together, we want them to match up perfectly. So every time we get into this inner part of our neckline, we do our increase. So we're increasing every other row until we're up to the 29 stitches. So we count the chain two, so there's two, three, and it is helpful if you count your rows just to make sure that you're staying on track. So I finished off that row at 23, so we'll work back at 23 stitches again. And now everything is pretty straightforward up until we reach our pocket section. We're just following our pattern of repeating each color for six rows. So I'm just gonna work up finishing my cream section. So I'm finishing off my cream section at 24 stitches. I'm gonna cut this, and next we'll be joining on the gray. But I'm just gonna leave that, join that back on, and show you how to begin. So this is your, this is on you, this is your left panel. So now I'll show you how to join onto your right panel. So now we are joining on on our wrong side. So here's our opening. Our markers mark the opening. So in that next stitch is where we'll be joining. And chain two. So now our chain two will count as our first herringbone double crochet. So into the next stitch, we'll do our herringbone and work across because we want a total, including the chain, of 20 stitches. Okay, so I finished off in the turning chain and I'm gonna turn my work. So now we're back to the right side. I'm gonna chain two, skipping the first stitch or chain two counts as our first herringbone. And when we're working on the right panel, we need to do our increase in our final stitch as opposed to the first stitch. 
So I'm going to work across and then I'll show you how to do your increase when I get across. Okay, so I'm just coming to the end. So there's the stitch. And then we have our turning chain. So what I'm going to do is put two herringbone double crochets into the turning chain. And then I'm going to chain two, turn my work again, and we're not increasing, so we skip the first and work our herringbone into the next. And then this will be the final row of yellow and then we'll switch up to the white. So once we're to the end, we can cut that and we're bringing in the white or cream yarn. chain two and always when we're on our outside edges we're skipping the first stitch and then working our herringbone so now remember on this side always when we're coming down the row the last stitch on the inside is the increase so other than that change, we're working this the same as our left panel. We're just increasing every other row until we're reaching 29 stitches, following the color pattern that we've already established and I've already worked through with you. So now I have a bit of work to do to get to our pocket section. So I'm gonna work these panels off camera. Okay, so I've been working away at my front panels. So here is where we've increased on both sides to get back up to 29 stitches. And then the rest of our panel is worked down through 29 stitches. So I worked up this panel. My, let's see, it's my right panel. So I've worked it up to the point where I'm gonna make an opening for our pocket. So I'm just gonna leave the left side for now and I'll work on showing you. This is just kind of come undone. How to do our pocket and I'm gonna start the pocket into our gray section. And we'll chain one and turn. For our pocket, we're going to work across in single crochets, not in herringbone doubles. We're still going to count our chain one as a stitch and we'll work across one. So including the chain one, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we're going to chain 15 for our pocket opening. skip over 15 stitches 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 and then we'll single crochet in the remaining seven stitches 1 2 3 
four, five, six, and in the turning chain seven. Chain one and turn. We're also going to work this row in single crochets as well and that One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we're going to work one single crochet. into every chain across. So you should have a total of 15. So I've chained one and turned and we're going to do one more row of single crochet. So now we're just working across our 29 stitches. And now we'll turn and chain two. And I'm gonna do five rows at this point of herringbone double crochet. So we'll count our three rows of single crochet as one herringbone double. Skipping the first, working into the next, and making sure that we have 29. So five rows of herringbone double crochet plus our three rows of single crochet is eight rows in total for our gray section. It will end up being maybe slightly longer than our back gray section. Okay, so I've completed one of my sleeves off camera. So this sleeve has our cuff here and then just goes up in the same color pattern as we've been working. Cream, orange, cream, gray, cream, yellow, cream. So we're starting with 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, we're going to do 28 um, rows so that works across 28 stitches and then we're going to increase up to 40 stitches for the widest part of the sleeve okay so for our cuff we're going to chain 13 because I want my cuff to be 12 stitches So there's 13 and now we'll work in the second chain from the hook. So one, two, we'll work single crochets all the way down the chain. So we'll have a total of 12 stitches. And I'm using my five millimeter crochet hook for the cuff section. So now we'll chain one in turn and we'll be working in the back loops only to get a nice ribbed effect. So here's our first stitch. You can see this is our chain one and here's the first stitch. You're going down through the stitch through the back loop only and just make your single crochet. So working through the back loops only. Whoops, work across. Twelve stitches. So now throughout, we're just working in the back loops only. 
and we want a total of 28 rows for our small size. And when we get to the end, chain one and turn. And it's just important that you count your stitches. You want to make sure that you don't lose a stitch or add a stitch. So I'm going to complete the rest of my cuff off camera. And then I'll meet you up again. Okay, so I've worked up my 28 rows. So you can just count by twos across. So I have 28. And now I'm going to change to my larger hook. And then we're just going to work across 28 stitches. So chain one and work across the band 28. Okay, so on our final stitch, we're going to change to our orange color, pull that through, chain two, and we can cut the cream. And now we're gonna need to do increases, gradual increases. So what I'm gonna do is my last row of every color section, I'm gonna increase the first stitch and the last stitch. So that's increasing two stitches here, two, four, six, eight, ten. So that brings us up to 38 stitches. And then in my second row of cream, I'm gonna add my final two stitches to do the final increase. So we'll actually do five rows in orange before we're actually doing our increase. So our chain two is going to count as our first stitch and then we're working our herringbone double crochet in every stitch across. So I'm not going to go through all that with you. You can go ahead and work your five herringbone double crochet rows in the orange, and then I'll meet you up for the sixth row where we'll do the increase. Okay, so I've worked up my five rows. We'll chain two and turn. So when we do our increase rows, we're gonna go into that very first stitch. So our chain two counts as a stitch and go right into the same stitch. So now we've increased this side, work your herringbone double all the way across, and then in the turning chain, we'll add an additional two stitches. Okay, so now I'm to the turning chain, and we'll add two herringbone double crochets in the turning chain, and now we've increased this row to 30 stitches. Oops, now on our last stitch, we're going to want to change to our cream. And then we can cut the orange. Chain two. So skipping over that first stitch, crocheting over our ends as we go. The next five rows again are just going to be 30 stitches and then when we get to that final we'll increase again. So now just follow this color pattern, increasing the last row, we're doing six for each of our colors, increasing that final one. So I've almost completed my sleeve. So when I got to my second row here of 
the final section of cream, I increased again so that I'm up to 40 stitches and it should measure about 12 inches. Then I'm just gonna continue finishing up so that I have my six rows of cream and then I'll fasten off with a long tail for seaming. Then these ends can just get weaved back in the opposite direction. And then the sleeve is done. Okay, so next I'm gonna show you how to do the pocket. I've finished one on my one side and as you can see, the pocket goes inside of the cardigan. So when this is hanging down, it just goes in and I'll steam this just to make sure that my edge is really good. Okay, so you wanna make sure that you are on the right side of your work to start with. And then you want to be facing your cream section. So when we skipped over our 15 stitches, we were on the right side here. So we want to join in as if we were still working across this row. So we have 15 skip stitches. So our pocket is 15 stitches wide. Gonna join in here. Work one single crochet in every stitch across for a total of 15 stitches. Okay, so I've worked across the 15 stitches. Now we'll chain two and turn. We're going to work half double crochets now in every stitch across. So yarn over, go through the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Yarn over, go through the stitch, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. Work half double crochet stitches all the way across. So I've worked across 15, I'll chain two and turn, and now we're just gonna continue working half double crochets for a total of 13 rows of half double crochets. If we include that first row of single crochet, 14 all together. So I'm gonna complete my rows off camera and then I'll meet you up. Okay, so I've worked up my 13 rows of half double crochet and it should come to about the end of the cream section. So two sections worth and then you can just fasten that off. Again, we're looking at the right side of our work. Now we're gonna join onto this side and do the same thing. So working across slip stitch working across 15 stitches in single crochet. Then we'll chain two and turn. And just like we did on the other side, we're gonna work across half double crochet stitches, total of 15 and we'll work 13 rows. Then once we get that, we'll seam up the pocket. So I'm gonna just complete these rows off camera and then I'll meet you up again. 
Okay, so I finished up the other side. I fastened off. This is your right side. You want to push the pockets through so they're onto the wrong side now. And then you can seam the pocket together. So you want to seam the bottom and the sides. So I've left the tails on. So I'm just going to work down this side. And you could seem that you're doing it the other way and push the pocket through, but I'm not really worried about this edging. And just make sure that that's And you can just weave your needle and you just want to complete that on the other side and seam the bottom as well. Okay, so for attaching the sleeves, what you want to do is mark the center of your sleeve with the center of your shoulder piece here. For our small size, it actually works out really well that we can just fit our sleeve between our gray stripes. So this is the right side of the cardigan. This is the right side of the sleeve. So what I'm gonna do for this size, like I say, it's easy. I'm just gonna seam right to this section. So right sides facing, use the tail, left on your sleeve, All we're doing is seaming this across, going through each stitch. Okay, so I've attached both of my sleeves and I'm just starting to seam. So this is my back panel, my front panel. And you could block these pieces before you seam. I'm gonna steam block mine. As you can see, it's gonna curl. So just, if you dampen your work and just pin it and let it completely dry, it will smooth it right out so you won't have this curving. But I have the steamer. So what you wanna do, these, is, these are my right sides. So we're putting them together and we're mattress stitching them together so that it's hiding the seam. So to do the mattress stitch, you really want to make sure that you have, see how you can see these lines of our work? We really want to try to make sure that it's matched up perfectly. And what you do to do the mattress stitch, let's see if I can get this a little closer for you. You just want to push your needle, here's my edge, down through and pull it up. So to start, I just knotted at the beginning. I'm using the cream yarn to do this. So I went to that side and then I'm coming back to the other side and doing the same thing. Just pushing through. Go to the other side, pushing through. Going to this side, pushing through. You can see all of my 
pieces here. Okay, so you can pull that and see how it just hides the yarn. I mean, it hides it pretty good. You may see the odd little bit poking through and how you can fix it at the end is you could go back and weave some of your light color through there just to hide if there's any stitching showing, but it typically hides it pretty well And you don't want to be changing your yarn up for every color. It'd be really time consuming, but you could do that. So just as you go, you're just matching up and you're wanting just even these little ridges here just to line up perfectly. So this is kind of a slow process to seam, but I'm going to get all of my sides seamed up. And then I'll meet you up because as we come, we're going to come right to the sleeve. And then you just continue the same thing all the way down the sleeve. And we do this for both sides of the cardigan. So as you can see, it's going to take a little bit of time to sit and seam this up. But if you can get yourself on a nice surface like this, a table an island or a desk or something you can it really helps you to see it and line up when we go through the cream it's definitely going to hide you're not even going to notice that seam at all You could have even done this for the shoulder, but the shoulder actually went on pretty good just doing a whip stitch. So I'm going to continue working this off camera and I'll meet you up when I have it finished. Okay, so I'm just coming to my sleeve now. So I've folded it same way. My right sides are facing each other here and I'm just gonna continue doing the mattress stitch. All the way along, making sure still that everything is lining up. as I go and if it doesn't you pull it and it's not lining up just pull your yarn back and try again it's good to keep sort of checking as you go that it's matching up perfectly okay so I'm just going to continue with my sleeve and I'll meet you up when I have it finished. Okay, so I finished off my bottom edge just adding a single crochet in every stitch around. So I just joined onto my corner here, worked a single crochet and fastened off. And now we need to do the collar section. And you can really pick any color to do the collar in. I'm going to use the gray and I'm going to use my smaller hook. So my five millimeter hook. So what I'm going to do is join my gray yarn.
and chain one. And then I'm going to work a single crochet along the edge. So I'm finding that nine stitches is a good amount of single crochet per your color section. If you put two per double crochet, it's going to be too many and doing one per row would be too few. So nine is just perfect. So basically three extra per row and it actually, it's just, it's working out well just to evenly space them. But if you just count as you go to three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And just do that all the way around. I'll meet you when we get up to the neck section. Just reaching the top of the neck and when you get there, just work in each stitch across makes it easy so I just worked across my 18 stitches three stitches for each yellow section and then we're just completing working all the way down the side of the cardigan Okay, so when you reach the end, you can chain two and turn. And now we're gonna start working half double crochets in every stitch across. This is gonna be a really simple band that's gonna work all the way around collar so half double crochet, let me just slow this down for you. You're yarning over, going through the stitch, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three, yarn over, go through the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three, and work that all the way around. And then we'll start working in the front loops only. For the rest of the band or collar. So I'm going to continue working around and I'll meet you when I finish up. Okay, so I've worked all the way down. And now we're going to work in to the back or the front loops only. So chain two. And what you're going to do is take a look at the stitch. So here's your stitch. You want to work through the front loop only. So yarn over, go through just that front loop. And that's going to leave a nice little ridge there. And so now we're just working the front loop only every stitch around. Okay, so I finished working my half double crochet rows in the front loop only. And you can see how it gives it a really nice ridged look to the collar and I've worked a total of eight half double crochet rows. So with the first row of single crochet, it's worked out to nine and that just gives us a nice collar to our sweater. Now in total for this project, I used almost exactly my four balls of gray. So I only have a small amount of it left 
I've used almost exactly two balls of my orange. So I only have also a small amount of orange left. I've used exactly all of the white yarn. So I used six balls in total for the small cardigan. And I would suggest probably getting for sure an extra ball of the white because it was really close on that. I just made it work. And our yellow, we used about a ball and a half. Um, so I still have quite a bit left on that second ball. So I'll have all those details in the blog post so you can go check that out to see exactly the yards that I used for the small sized cardigan. Thank you. 